Dear viewers, you are watching our weekly program on Obin Horn of Africa. Today we have a special edition. Uh, uh, I joined by uh, Dr. Uh, Ratha Duguma, uh, Director of uh, Institute of Gada Study at uh, Harama University to discuss uh, about uh, Gada system and uh, rate of values. Uh, stay tuned till the end of our program. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Thank you too. Uh, let me begin with this question. You are director of an Institute of Gada Studies at uh, Harama University. What is your institute doing uh, in studying this system? Uh, of course, uh, since the beginning of the uh, launching of this Institute of Gada Studies, we have tried to, uh, you know, document some uh, uh, events of the Oromo, which uh, is dominantly related with uh, the Gada system. For instance, in 2019, we have uh, attended the Karayu Gada power transfer ceremony, which was conducted uh, at uh, a place uh, called uh, Tututi. And the power transfer ceremony was uh, uh, very uh, interesting uh, because it involves uh, uh, the coming of a lot of people, the camping, you know, uh, the ceremony, uh, you know, for uh, the final ceremony, there were many stages, many uh, preparations that we have uh, observed at the time. Also, the uh, situation, how they conduct those ceremonies, the involvement of different group of peoples, uh, the uh, a kind of prayer ceremony also that took place at, uh, uh, you know, uh, Tulu or uh, a mountain top. At the same time, uh, Recha at uh, Lake Matahara, we have observed that. We also documented how women involved in this uh, powerful power transfer ceremony. Most of the literature uh, uh, that dealt with the Gada excluded women, actually, due to lack of some data or uh, for uh, lack of interest. They uh, often uh, exclude the role of women in the Gada uh, ceremony. We have observed how the elder, I mean the uh, elder uh, uh, sister of the outgoing Abagada involved in the affair. Women have uh, their own roles. We have observed those uh, things. It was very colorful, very interesting, it involved uh, different kind of people, a different age group are involved. And it was so uh, uh, attractive. And then finally, they give power peacefully. Uh, that, that is what we have observed. At the same time, the Gumigayu of uh, the Borana, we have observed, documented, uh, both uh, uh, in audio. And also we have, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, changed that uh, audio into a written uh, form for use, uh, you know, for use at different time. Uh, we have attended different events which are related with the Gada, with the Oromo culture. Uh, and recently, uh, the last uh, April, we have attended the power transfer ceremony of the Itu uh, Oromo. So uh, we have tried our best to document what is those important events in the power transfer ceremony. It clearly showed us how the Oromo uh, manage their own affair. Uh, you know, uh, it was really uh, uh, take you back to uh, the period before the conquest of the Oromo. So it was so peaceful, so calm. Uh, the ceremony was so uh, has many states. Uh, there are blessings. Blessings were made. Prayer to uh, Waka were made. Uh, so on and so forth. We have tried to document all uh, uh, these uh, events which are related with uh, the Gada. Still, we have many uh, legacies of the Gada which our people uh, are using nowadays. And we have tried to uh, document uh, all those uh, very important um, aspects of the Oromo that they, uh, you know, preserved to uh, this time. So in some areas, uh, you know, many aspects were uh, gradually weakened, eroded due to the impact of the 
past successive Ethiopian regimes on the Oromo people. How do you compare uh, the Gada system with the Western democracy? Of course, uh, the Oromo have been practicing uh, the Gada system, the most uh, democratic, I can say. Before uh, the, you know, uh, people from Europe migrated to America, uh, the Oromo have been practicing the Gada system. Uh, the Gada has system has, even so, in some aspects, it is even more than the democratic uh, system of government in some respects. Uh, you know, among the Oromo, the Jaffe, the National Assembly has, uh, the, has the highest authority, which is equivalent to today's modern uh, parliament. Uh, opposition parties are there. The involvement of uh, different age groups in taking responsibilities, you can see power sharing, you can see uh, the, a kind of ministerial system. The Ministry of Defense we have, Ministry of uh, Economic we have, Ministry, uh, I mean, uh, the judge, the judiciary we have. Uh, you know, uh, since Oromos have been practicing the Gada system, even before the 16th century, even though uh, many literature uh, trace back to 16 and the other, it goes back many uh, centuries since time immemorial. Oromo uh, had passed through the uh, monarchical system uh, in the remote past, and they began to practice uh, the democratic system. So the Gada system is really uh, the most uh, important in addressing the Oromo problems. Uh, the check and the balances were done. Elections were conducted every eight years. Uh, balanced opposition is there. Uh, you know, separation of power is there within it. And the people also involved even in criticizing, in censuring the leaders who had who had manifested some misconducts. So the Oromo democratically and openly uh, discuss matters by involving a different group of uh, people from different age, uh, responsibility uh, was also given, shared, and that is really the most uh, important. And we have many uh, issues uh, the Gada system has. The modern democratic system uh, might have something, and the Gada also has many aspects, which is even better off in some respects than the modern demo democratic system. For instance, in the modern democratic system, a single person can be elected twice, two terms. But in the Gada system, a leader, if the leader has finished his term of office, uh, that is over because the Oromo associate uh, with, uh, with a line, for instance. If a line finished his eight years, it began to hunt. You know, after completing eight years old, the line starts to hunt. Uh, they associate because the more uh, a single person stayed on power for long years, the more he become, you know, uh, you know, susceptible or liable to uh, different misconducts and the like. So the Oromo limited that. But in the Western democracy, you can uh, be elected uh, two two terms. In the Oromo case, uh, beyond eight years, it's not allowed. So periodical election, competition in the election, representation in the parliament, in the Jaffe assembly, decentralization were also there among the Oromo. So uh, different clans do have their own center of assembly based on the model of the National Assembly. We can uh, dig out many, many important uh, aspects of the Gada system, which uh, managed the overall well-being of the Oromo. As you know, uh, the Gada system has been uh, included uh, in the uh, education curriculum of the country. And uh, some universities have been uh, graduating uh, professionals measuring the system. Uh, what is being done to further expand this system? Of course, uh, you know, the Gada system is really uh, the powerhouse of uh, Oromo uh, knowledge, uh, traditions, culture, custom, uh, you know, it includes every aspect of human life. So uh, the good values, the knowledge, the wisdom from the Gada system that our um, forefathers had been, uh, you know, improving, shaping, deliberating over it through a long period of time should be uh, known by the posterity. We should draw also many lessons because 
Zagada system is the result of a long time deliberations. The laws were improved. The system were flexible. It's not rigid. You know, uh, elders, the Abagadas, rulers, the peoples have also their role in improving, in shaping their own laws, the heras and the seras over time. Therefore, uh, even uh, it's more flexible, Div different groups of Oromos have, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the right to, you know, adapt uh, a new laws, rules, seras and heras, uh, based on the concrete realities of their environment. Uh, it has many values, many wisdom within it, so the generation has to know. Because for the last 100 years and um, above, you know, uh, all the system uh, have been uh, attacked, weakened by successive Ethiopian uh, regimes. So the rich uh, traditions of the Oromo, the rich values of the Oromo must be learned by uh, the generation. So we have to work towards, you know, uh, preserving those things for future generation. So they become proud of it, how we have a very modern system really, uh, as compared to uh, even uh, some uh, African countries, as well as uh, the Europeans even. We have uh, a very uh, a system through uh, which we can, uh, you know, manage our aspects, discuss openly, freely, uh, and uh, also solve our problems. Therefore, uh, we are trying to uh, open uh, an MA program in indigenous study. Uh, we are doing certain works. We are conducting uh, assessment at this time. If uh, it is allowed, uh, recently the Ministry of uh, Education, for some times, uh, you know, we hold the opening of different program. Uh, probably uh, we are collecting some data um, and some assessment to open an MA program uh, in indigenous study. Uh, the major aspect of which is uh, one of which were, is uh, the Gada system and other uh, institutions of the Oromo. Therefore, uh, many universities started Oromo studies, for instance. Uh, Jima University, RC University, Bulehora uh, University, have started different, established different institution, Institute of Oromo Studies, Institute of Gada and the Culture Studies uh, are established. Therefore, this is part of an effort uh, toward this, uh, enhancing uh, uh, the wisdom, the knowledge of the Oromo. Uh, I think in the future, we have to do more on this. We have to establish uh, a very firm base so that they can do more uh, in, in preserving uh, the Oromo institutions, the Oromo system, including the Gada, so that the posterity would learn uh, many aspects from it. What is a Recha for Oromo people? What is the place of Recha in the Gada system? Would you explain it? Yeah, actually, uh, Recha uh, is the most important uh, uh, it, it holds the most important place uh, in the Oromo life. Uh, it is conducted in different places at different times. Particularly, uh, the Recha of Bra is, uh, you know, uh, it shows the shift from uh, the summer season. You know, the rainy seasons are uh, heavy during uh, June, July, August and it become small during the September, uh, in the month of September. So uh, the transition from summer season to uh, Bra, uh, it's the time that marks uh, the end of the summer season and the coming of uh, a new season, a new year. Uh, so it holds a special place among the Oromo because during the summer season, uh, summer season is associated with, uh, you know, sometimes uh, darkness, not in the true sense of darkness, but to reflect the heavy rainfall, the muddy uh, 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 environment, the muddy landscape during those times, uh, uh, rivers overflow, swell, and the people are not uh, easily connected to each other due to, uh, you know, this uh, the, the, the feeling over of uh, the river, the river swells. 
uh, there are diseases also during this uh, summer period. Uh, production is becoming smaller and smaller during the summer season. Therefore, uh, they want to, uh, you know, thank God for shifting the season, a new year, whereby they develop uh, a new hope. Uh, you know, uh, there are uh, different uh, flowers that bloom on the ground. Nature also speaks the glory of God during those times. The environment, the mountain, the valleys become very green. Uh, the flowers bloom. All these things speak the glory of Waka. Therefore, when nature speaks about the glory of Waka, the Oromo also, uh, you know, give thanks to their God. A God who uh, peacefully, uh, uh, you know, uh, shifted us from uh, the summer season to Bra. The Bra, you know, the crops they cultivated uh, start to grow uh, until they uh, ripe. Therefore, uh, they speak about many themes, many issues are addressed during those times. Uh, about peace, about Arara reconciliation, uh, you know, uh, about harmony, brotherhood, about the keeping of Oromo custom, uh, norms, values, the keeping of Oromo Safu. Uh, all these issues are addressed. Uh, so they address their issues to Waka. Uh, to uh, let them have a peaceful time, uh, the Gada period of, or the new year of that period to be uh, in abundance, uh, to have prosperity, uh, to have uh, a good health. You know, they ask and address to their waka uh, to, to, to bring them abundant production, uh, the year to become the year of uh, prosperity, uh, the year of uh, abundance, the year of health, uh, the year in which their cattle multiply, etc., etc. So it was conducted during the Burra season. Arrecha, Arrecha is conducted during the Burra season as well as during the Arfasa in the spring period, uh, uh, more or less for uh, you know the same purpose. Even during Arfasa, they ask God when the Bona, the long winter season, uh, as the winter become long, they ask uh, uh, their own God to bring rain to their cattle because the Oromos economy uh, is mainly a cattle in addition to uh, agriculture. Uh, cattle uh, occupies the most important economy uh, among the Oromo. So in order for their cattle to have uh, fresh grass, they pray to Waka on Tulu, being on the mountain top or on the hill, they pray to their Waka to, to bring uh, the rain so that their cattle uh, will have uh, abundant grasses and will give um, you know milk and milk products which the Oromos uh, use for their uh, as a livelihood. Uh, Erecha is conducting in different places by the riverside, lake, and also uh, you know in plain areas. Even sometimes it starts from home. They uh, you know uh, when I was a child I have observed when uh, our um, grandfather make Recha at his home and then continue to uh, make Recha by the riverside. People gather together, who quarreled uh, together, uh, who people who quarreled earlier uh, are reconciled. Uh, there is no attendance of Recha without reconciliation. Everything should have to be uh, in peace. Uh, children attained, young men attained, elders, adult men attained, they sing songs, uh, not only uh, songs, but songs that uh, glorify God, uh, songs that uh, address uh, problems within the society so that people uh, uh, can, can have those issues. Uh, so they pass uh, their message, they convey uh, their message during those time to have uh, a relationship, good relationship with each other, to have peace, to uh, you know to uh, you know live in harmony etc etc so most of the issues the teams addressed during those times were for the peace of the country uh, even uh, address about the environmental issues to keep the environment well uh, beyond uh, uh, addressing uh, or prayer to their waka 
the issues sunk during this, those time addresses, uh, you know, keeping their environment for the well-being of the Ormo, et cetera, et cetera. So we can uh, get many values uh, from those things. And for many people from different uh, countries have been participating uh, on uh, Recha Festival every year. Would you tell us uh, about the, the importance in strengthening people to people relations? Yes, actually, uh, people who live as neighbors of the Oromo usually engage because uh, the Oromo, naturally, the Oromos are democratic. They, uh, you know, support communal life instead of individualistic life. So their neighbors are attracted to those things. Uh, the Oromo didn't impose anything on other ethnic groups. Those neighbors who see the Oromo practicing, uh, I mean, making prayer, making a recha ceremony, uh, freely attend to show their, uh, uh, you know, brotherhood, uh, their harmony with, with, with the Oromo, actually. Since uh, the Oromos have uh, a good uh, culture, you know, uh, incorporating other ethnic group into his, uh, his, his culture, uh, making a member of uh, his clan, treating uh, those people like any other Oromo. You see, there is no uh, addition or subtraction. They are treated equal with the Oromo. There is no uh, hierarchical relationship. That's why the neighboring ethnic group, uh, you know, willingly involved uh, in the Irecha. And we are, nowadays, the people who are involved in the Irecha are increasing. And uh, I hope uh, in the near future, it will become a national holidays. People from Southern Ethiopia who share uh, this, uh, you know, uh, this Irecha, they also their own version of, uh, you know, uh, thank you giving ceremony. If you take the people of Dorze, the people of Gamu, the people of Walaita, the people of Hadiya, they have similar kind of things because uh, most of them are belonging, most of them belong to the Kushitic uh, people. And as such, we don't have any that much uh, different culture. We have many similarities. That's why they came to show solidarity uh, with the Oromo by attending the Oromo Recha by singing their own cultural songs. You see, the Oromo do not uh, you know, restrict them, do not impose on them to sing their own kind of songs, but those different ethnic groups also celebrate this Recha by singing their own traditional songs as a sign of solidarity, as a sign of brotherhood, as a sign of peace, uh, you know, wishing peace, uh, living in peace with the Oromo. So uh, it has really much significance. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, there, there are um, many campaigns that try to undermine uh, this Recha. Despite this fact, many people came to understand that the or came to understand that the Oromos are merely uh, making prayer as thanksgiving to uh, uh, their God. Uh, that's why they joined the Oromo. And uh, the God, as they know, uh, is a God for everyone. Therefore, uh, uh, they join the Oromo to show their, uh, you know, uh, willingness to, uh, you know, have uh, as a willingness to show their goodwill to uh, the Oromo. Uh, that's really uh, very interesting. Good. Uh, such a grand festival should be promoted to the entire uh, world to preserve it. Uh, what should be expected from uh, stakeholders and the scholars uh, like you uh, in these aspects? Exactly. Actually, nowadays people are um, accustomed to attending a recha, not only uh, you know from uh, inside the country but from outside. Uh, and also, the Oromo diasporas are nowadays uh, beginning to make recha ceremony. Uh, in the place where they live, in Australia, in Canada, in Europe, uh, in America, uh, they uh, are making, you know, popularizing Recha. And the people are asking even nowadays, some foreigners are asking the Oromo, uh, what kind of aspect uh, it has, what elements it has. Uh, 
which uh, group of people are practicing this? They begin to ask and know uh, the Oromo. And nowadays it is becoming popular. So in order to get inscribed in the UNESCO, scholars have to do more. More is expected from uh, uh, scholars, uh, researchers who uh, focus on this uh, Oromo culture, Oromo uh, traditions, Oromo religion, et cetera, et cetera, and the like. Uh, so we have to do more studies, a more uh, scientific, a more convincing study, uh, uh, because it involved, uh, it has been involving many millions of people. And now uh, it, it's going beyond Ethiopia, because the Oromo uh, everywhere in the world uh, even played a significant role uh, in, in, in promoting this uh, erasure and people are interested in that. And also the people in uh, other parts of the world are interested, particularly the West. They lost everything of their culture since the 19th century with uh, industrialization, with uh, technological development, etc., and the like. Uh, Western become highly individualistic and they leave behind all those cultures and their tra traditions. Therefore, they are interested, since they lost their culture and tradition long ago, uh, they are interested in these uh, aspects of the Oromo. Uh, it has many aspects, uh, cultural aspects, religious aspects, many issues are addressed, environmental aspects are addressed, and, uh, you know, ethics, morality are addressed in that um, during celebration. And also uh, cultural dress. Uh, Oromos have rich cultural dress. Very uh, interesting cultural dresses, decorations you can observe it. You can observe from different parts of Oromia. Those by themselves are really captivating. They are eye-catching. Therefore, you can see a number of events within that very short period of time. You can see a huge events and activities. Therefore, uh, scholars have to conduct a study, a very scientific study uh, in, in a critical way so that uh, someday it will be inscribed uh, in the UNESCO and all stakeholders should do towards this uh, effort. Good. Uh, such a mega uh, events has uh, have multiple economic effects has the nation benefited enough from uh, this festival uh, so far in this regard? If not, what should be improved? Yeah, exactly. Really, this is really um, an important issue. Millions of people attend uh, during those uh, ceremonies. Yeah. So they drop uh, uh, money uh, everywhere they uh, spend for a week uh, or half a week, etc. They spend, therefore, there should be uh, enough uh, infrastructure for that. Accommodations, uh, transportations, uh, road, issues related with uh, road, extra road uh, facilities should be made uh, available in a way that accommodate uh, the attendances. Uh, because a large number of people gather together, uh, every effort has to be done. To, to toward this, this effort uh, because you know areas where uh, you know from Addis Ababa from uh, Mojo Bushoftu Adama etc there should be uh, enough and appropriate uh, hotels restaurants uh, generally accommodations transport system also uh, the health situation should be you know uh, there. Uh, clinics, hospitals should be ready in those times and uh, we have to do more in order to uh, get uh, more income from uh, uh, tourists might come from abroad and today they are become, they are very interested and they are coming in large number therefore uh, we, we have to accommodate all um, uh, those people uh, therefore we have to give much attention. I think uh, uh, the effort made should be enhanced more than more than uh, the infrastructures we have now. Uh, otherwise, they could not stay for a long time. The more they stay, uh, the more uh, the income they might bring to uh, our country. So we have to make them stay for a long time by 
making available the facilities which are needed uh, for their accommodation. So more task has to be done on that aspect. I don't think uh, the, the efforts made till now are not enough. I don't think they are enough, but further work has to be done to accommodate more uh, you know, guests, uh, visitors, uh, travelers, uh, many people from different parts of the country, many other ethnic groups are also attending. So we have to build a good image during those times. One of, uh, one of the ways by which we can build image is by facilitating accommodations for uh, these guests, uh, travelers, tourists, visitors. Uh, so therefore, we, we can get much income as, we, as, as, as the ceremony is becoming uh, even worldwide. Uh, it, it really, the potential is very high. We have to do more on that aspect. Good. Uh, as you know, uh, Gada system has been uh, inscribed by UNESCO as intangible cultural heritage since uh, 2016. What is it is important to the nation and what should be done to inscribe Recha uh, on UNESCO? Yeah, um, it has much significance. Uh, even though much effort was not done by the last successive uh, regimes, uh, in the first place, giving uh, value to the Gada system has by itself a great implication. We know that uh, the Ethiopian uh, policies of the imperial or the Dirk or uh, the TPLF lead government were they doing their best to block, to weaken uh, the Oromo uh, uh, Gada system, the Oromo practice, Etc. Etc. As by linking it with uh, some pretexts, by attacking them, with uh, by linking attaching them with some pretext, with some uh, you know pretexts they undermined, attacked, etc. Etc. We know how some people opposed when uh, the Gada was inscribed in the UNESCO. Many people uh, opposed this. It's a very good cultural value, a very good democratic system, getting recognition from UNESCO has really a very uh, important significance. And it makes the Gada system to continue. Uh, you know, uh, the, regimes have been, uh, the regimes have been weakening uh, the Oromo system, the Oromo culture and way of life. But, uh, you know, being recognized uh, is, uh, uh, will encourage the system. And uh, we, we can use many uh, wisdoms and knowledge and values of the Oromo, uh, even for uh, uh, ourselves nowadays by ad adapting the best experiences of the Gada system. Therefore, uh, we have to make a strong effort uh, for Irecha to be inscribed in the UNESCO. Every stakeholder should work. It's not a one-time event. You know, the ceremony comes, we say it will be inscribed, uh, we will do that and this and this, we say, but we have to work. We have to take this as a homework, and we have to do, uh, we have to make much effort towards this uh, uh, end, okay? Otherwise, uh, uh, a one-time event, we talk a one-time event and we go back and we uh, forget it, that should not be uh, important. We have to plan, we have to study them scientifically, we have to, uh, you know, put convincing uh, issues, why Recha needs to be inscribed in the UNESCO, uh, we, we have to study, we have to uh, rationalize it, we have to convince, and we have to present a very scientific uh, a document, a well-stated document, so every stakeholder should uh, work towards uh, this effort. In that way, uh, nowadays, even uh, the world is coming to know the celebration of Eritrea because foreigners involved in it, and many Oromo diasporas, Wherever they are, they are uh, celebrating Irecha. Therefore, uh, they are also the diasporas are also um, promoting Irecha. At the same time, uh, there are uh, certain works that have been done. Uh, now, many scholars are studying even Irecha, Irecha uh, of Hora Arsadi, Irecha of uh, Hora Bissil, and uh, nowadays, Irecha of uh, Hora Finfine is started. Therefore, uh, we have to do aggressively on these issues, very seriously. Uh, we have to document it. Uh, very well in a manner that can convince uh, uh, the UNESCO, the body that can um, have the authority to inscribe it, 
as a world cultural heritage. Therefore, scholars, uh, tourism and cultural bureaus, uh, regional governments should uh, focus uh, towards this, uh, this effort to get inscribed in the UNESCO so that uh, um, uh, we will be compensated. We lost many of the chances in the past successive regimes, so we have to compensate ourselves. So, uh, uh, you know, one Durat Abne, Amamo, Oje you know, we have to get uh, compensated by doing more so that it will be recognized by UNESCO. A recognition uh, by itself will help the continuity of this, uh, uh, you know, Recha celebration. Good. Uh, this year's Recha festival is marked under the motto uh, Recha is the emblem of. Uh, uh, unity and the brotherhood. What does this mean? Yes, exactly. Um, even uh, during a recha, one of the teams emphasized uh, has been uh, a brotherhood, uh, solidarity, uh, peace, a reconciliation. Even people who uh, attend the recha ceremony should have to resolve, should reconcile. Uh, you know, having uh, conflicts, just you cannot attend it by having conflict because during a recha, you have to be very open, you have to be lively, lovely with others, you have to join hands with others. So uh, it is a time of unity. Uh, all people uh, are uh, happily involving in it. And one cannot attend even without resolving their conflicts. Uh, they have to be reconciled in order to happily uh, engage with their brothers, sisters during the ceremony. So uh, you can see unity during a recha. Both small and the great, big and the small, uh, everyone uh, collaborate, cooperate with, other, with each other. And you can see the unity during those times. Even uh, at the time when I, I attended uh, the Recha ceremony during my uh, young age, I remember the kind of support uh, people uh, have uh, to one another uh, during the, the ceremony. And also, uh, as uh, we have discussed earlier, many other people also attend. A different ethnic group come and join hands with the Oromo to show their uh, unity with the Oromo, their solidarity with the Oromo. So Recha is a place where you can see uh, the unity among the people, solidarity, brotherhood, all those things are, you know, uh, the good values uh, during the Recha ceremony. Uh, those aspects should have to be done, not only during the Recha, but also has to be manifested uh, during other times, other days. Therefore, uh, it's really very interesting to see such great unity during uh, those ceremonies. What is the importance of making such uh, grand festivals as a nation in terms of sustaining uh, and cementing social fabrics? It has great significance. Now different people are joining, different ethnic groups are joining. Uh, in the long run, I believe that this will have uh, the power to stick together different group of peoples of Ethiopia. You know, the more you show uh, solidarity with the Oromo, the more it gradually creates uh, unity among uh, the people, I believe. So most people are much interested uh, in this uh, Recha ceremony to celebrate it with the Oromo. Even those people who are um, um, who belong to other ethnic group are appreciating in one way or in the other way. Uh, the beauty of the cultural diversity even uh, cultural dresses, uh, decorations, etc., etc., attracts people. I see uh, when some people appreciate, even in major uh, cities like Finfinne, uh, Addis uh, Ababa, even though some try to, uh, you know, undermine it, uh, most of them are, uh, you know, impressed with the decorations, the dressing styles, etc., etc. So that is an economic benefit uh, for different group of people. Uh, some people who do have uh, misunderstandings on the Eretia uh, began to be aware of it nowadays. 
In that case, it will attract more and more people. So uh, different group of people are attracted to be, uh, you know, attracted to uh, celebrate it with Oromo and uh, enjoy with Oromo. Uh, so a person who share your happiness, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, that's good. Therefore, as more and more people are joining hands with Oromo in the celebration of the Recha, it will, it will have uh, its own significant in cementing people together, in developing uh, brotherhood, uh, and also in creating harmony. Therefore, its role towards peace building is very high. Therefore, we have to work towards that uh, in a way that can have its own positive impact uh, in nation uh, building also. Well, uh, what do you advise stakeholders and the scholars to discharge their responsibility in promoting such grand uh, festivals to the rest of the world? Yeah, every effort must have been uh, must have to be done. Uh, still, uh, there are many works that have been done, but we have to uh, enhance those works further. Uh, you know, it's not a one-time issue. It has to be consistently uh, done in order to promote it. Uh, people inside the country uh, are celebrating it during different period of time. Even in October, uh, in some places, you know, seasons are uh, there are seasonal differences from place to place. Some in some places uh, it is celebrated in October. In some pla uh, in most places in September, etc. Therefore, uh, every stakeholders from uh, culture and tourism bureau, the regional governments, uh, scholars must join hands to conduct a rigorous study on it, a very scientific study uh, on it, and promote it at the international level. In fact, uh, the diaspora Oromo are also promoting this Recha by celebrating it uh, uh, along riverside or lakeside in different parts of the country. That is also part of promotion. Uh, inside the country, much works have been done to promote it. Still, uh, all of us should join hands uh, to work together and, uh, uh, you know, make a richer uh, uh, ceremony festivity to be inscribed uh, in the UNESCO. Therefore, this will uh, ensure its continuity. It will continue vigorously so that different peoples of the world uh, can learn uh, many aspects from this uh, richer uh, ceremony. It's not, uh, although its major task was thanksgiving, prayer to their waka, uh, to glorify their waka, it has many cultural aspects beside its religious uh, values. Many cultural aspects are manifested. Many messages uh, are conveyed. Uh, messages related to uh, the continuity of society, like, you know, the keeping of Safu, cultural val norms, customs of the Oromo, uh, supporting one another, helping one another, uh, communal life instead of individualistic life, which is becoming very rampant nowadays. Therefore, about the environment, uh, besides the religious significance, many messages uh, have been conveyed during the Recha ceremony. Those uh, issues are really very uh, important to uh, the survival of the society. Therefore, uh, we have to make every effort, scholars, uh, students, the ordinary society, uh, the Culture and Tourism Bureau, the regional governments should work uh, towards uh, this effort so that the world can learn many good values. Uh, I want to add uh, something on the Oromo uh, Safu. Uh, our uh, forefathers had been guided uh, by this Safu. Safu uh, embraces uh, many aspects, uh, ethics or morality. Uh, uh, probably it's quite difficult to translate it into uh, English. Uh, so this Safu in the past and the Safu in the present, uh, we have to do more uh, tasks on them. Uh, internal changes, external changes, uh, are responsible for the breakup of Safu. Nowadays, we are uh, looking uh, some some uh, strange aspects even uh, among the Oromo with regard to Safu. Uh, naturally, Oromo uh, prefer 
communal life. Its system is very open system, democratic system. Uh, it's uh, for the well of for the well being of the common good for the common people. Uh, you know, Oromo live uh, uh, a communal life, not individualistic life. Uh, Oromo is not self centered naturally. Uh, Oromo even thinks for the environment, let alone the human being. Uh, naturally, uh, Oromo, uh, you know, think for the environment, even for the animal. We know Hera, Hera related to animal rights. Animal rights is not started recently, as we, we have been informed by this, uh, the Western, uh, they say animal rights, etc., etc. But uh, the Oromo have laws, Hera, I mean, Hera for animal rights, not only now, but in the long, in the long past uh, time, uh, we have also uh, respect animal rights. We have the laws for that. Uh, uh, so what I should uh, uh, have to underline here is that we have to keep the Oromo Safu. We should not be individualistic. We should prioritize the benefit of the large majority of our people. Uh, the Oromo have been, uh, you know, they suffered under a different regime, economically, politically, culturally, we are denigrated, undermined, etc. So uh, the regimes abused our culture and uh, even they influenced it. We have taken their culture uh, as a good thing, as something good. And some of us are influenced by uh, those cultures of the northern elite, the hierarchical, the self centeredness the high class and the low class, uh, the Oromo believe in the equality of all people, the Oromo believe in the upholding of Safu. Wherever Safu breaks, the society will collapse, a robbery will uh, prevail, uh, you know, a falsehood will prevail, individualistic will prevail. We have to turn back to the Oromo Safu. Think for our people work for the common good of our people. And uh, I think we have to return back to uh, citing, you know, Safu is important for the survival of a society. If Safu breaks within our society, it could be difficult for our society to continue uh, with its strength and might, uh, you know, a society will not become normal unless we uh, help to, uh, you know, uh, uh, we help to manifest the Safu practically in office uh, or elsewhere. Therefore, uh, our fathers, our forefathers' Safu uh, should not be left aside. Uh, this is my message. Uh, Oromo, uh, we have to return back to the Oromo Safu, the Oromo, uh, favor common life, support, brotherhood, and the like, we have no self-centeredness, we have no individualistic life. Therefore, uh, the message I should convey is uh, sticking to uh, the Safu of the Oromo as uh, its own importance for the well-being of the Oromo uh, society. That is uh, my message. Thank you. Dr. Rata Duguma, Director of uh, Institute of Gada Studies at Haramea University, Thank you for your time and your deep insight on our program. Thank you, you too. Thank you, you too. Dear viewers, that is all what we have for now. Till the next time, have a good time.